Hello, my name is Azira. I'm from Sarina Observation. Uh, this is regarding the point on Article 153. Yeah? Um, I think it was Mr. Andrew uh, Garrison, you, Dr. Park Chan Song, made a comment regarding on Article 153 plus 2. I'm saying where there is this term, such proportion as may be reasonable, and special position of the police, I think have not really been judicially defined yet by the Asian courts. I may be mistaken. But that's me correct. Right? Right, right. uh, so I'm asking this in America for the case of Brown versus Board of Education. You have uh, the story. Short story is this: it's a black uh, an African American girl who's trying to apply for uh, a position in a all white uh, all Caucasian school, and she succeeded in court. So judicial activism actually can still affect change to this society. My question is this: I'm from you picking your IPM. Um, I have I have seen international students, Chinese from China in the university, Koreans in the university, Mauritians in the university, Yemen students in the university. So then again, why is this not challenge in your ITM in the courts? Just asking. So yeah, thank you. Hi, Harris here. Yeah. Um, I, want to, I want to just address your presentation, and it, it brought to my mind this consideration. I think we should ask ourselves who the villains are, who the villains are and who the victims. Now, you, in your comparison with the uh, South African apartheid, in your first part, you indicated that there it was, in fact, the whole of the elite of the 18%. Then in comparison to our situation here, it was the elite of the 67%. Now, that's immediately suggested that it's only the elite of the Malays. And I, I go back to what they said just now, that post-70, 71, when we had uh, a line put by the side and in its place by Risa National, you have all the political parties, practically all, in Samalando, I, I, sorry, I, I don't call this Samalando anymore, Malaya. <laughs> And then the political parties in Sabah and Sarawak. So the reality is this. This couldn't have been done only by AMRO without the cooperation of all the other political leaders of all the other political parties. And this is why I said we need to identify the villain, the real villain. It's not just AMRO, it's AMRO. AMRO couldn't have done it all by itself. It needed the cooperation of all the other political party leaders. Collusion. Now that's as, as far as the... Um, uh, that aspect goes. Now 153, I think we've already heard from, from Azmi. My personal view is 153, right in the context of what is said in the Reef Commission report, um, is in fact no more than an affirmative action program. It was envisaged you shouldn't go for more than 15 years. We know May 13, 1969, interfered any, with any possible review. But see it as something that is potentially rather innocuous and in fact quite positive. And then identify who the, who the, the villains are again. Post-1971, it's Barisa National, Barisa National, Barisa National, not 153. Now, you also mentioned that through the DEDs, billions, billions did not reach the non-Malay citizens. The reality is it also did not reach the poor Malays. It did not reach the poor Dayak, Iban, Magadan, Basically, the poor have been marginalized, what I say, not just the non-Malays. Now, I think the problem is this. Um, as I always say, it has, it has to start with us. Ten years ago, ten years ago, when I had the film forms, you always had this race, religion, sex. Race, ten years ago, I put irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. Starting from 2007, 2008, it is Anak Bangsa Malaysia. I refuse to put any, anything else. Um, religion, I put irrelevant, and sex, I put yes, please. <laughs> okay, now, uh, I think what I'm trying to say is this. It starts with us. If 28 million Malaysians, okay, forget the kids, half of us, the adults, if the adults refuse to be classified, that's the end of it. It's up to us. puts forward a resolution of what we've discussed today. Okay, um, summing up from what the speakers had said, um, may I suggest the following? 
Um, one, if, if everybody in the hall agrees, you know, we should say that um, Malaysia has to first ratify the United Nations Convention Against Ethnic Discrimination, that's uh, third CERD, and then uh, secondly, um, ratify the International Covenant on Civil Rights and uh, Civil and Political Rights. Okay, and uh, thirdly, perhaps you know we should once and for all put a full stop to this continuous reincarnation of the NEP. And um, it should be replaced, as rightly said, by all the speakers um, with a needs-based affirmative action program. Yeah, um, this is where uh, what Dr. Kuo Kya Sung brought up might fit in, that uh, we should have an Equality and Equal Opportunities Commission to, to look into things like um, civil service, uh, quotas or proportions. And then, um, okay, the, the big bugbear, the Article 153. So what, uh, okay, we've had several different views about that, um, with Harris saying that it is not um, quite the cause of, of all, uh, or, the, or the mother of our problems as we think it is, but still, um, isn't it necessary to, to have uh, correct interpretation of, of the extent of uh, 153, you know, and, and because of the Sedition Act, we're not allowed to bring it up. So, so what does the forum and, you know, um, okay, let, let's take it to the political parties. You know, can, can we get a commitment from the politicians to state their stand quite clearly on what their parties intend to do, and this applies to, of course, um, the DAP, the PKR, FAST, as well as the DN components, mm -hmm. as to how these political parties, very soon, in a few months, they're going to ask us for our votes, and we want them to tell us what they do, what are their concrete plans to put an end and to dismantle this institutionalized uh, racism. I'm going to give the floor to our Panelists, uh, first, uh, the resolutions concerning the <coughs> United Nations Convention. I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are binding. And, uh, you know, in, in as much as any UN resolution is binding and has an effect on government policy, so that's okay. Uh, as far as 153 is concerned, uh, I think my, my personal opinion is this. As I say, it may be small, it may be narrow, like what Harry says, or uh, you know, it may require correct interpretation. But still, you know, uh, having a, a, a statement like that in the Constitution forever institutionalizes into the, into the life of this nation. And there are always going to be two tiers of citizenship. Right? You can say it's about small things, but I think you know uh, a constitution is a document, as as what Azmi, Dr. Azmi, rightfully uh, pointed out. There should be vision. There should be uh, you know dignity. And in my opinion, as long as we leave. Uh, room for politicians to interpret, right? And when you've got the judiciary in your pocket, what interpretation are we talking about? I think, you know, uh, a constitution uh, basically conceives the nation, right? And it needs to be conceived right. So, in my opinion, I think, you know, whatever the, uh, the intent, you know, uh, whether it's the affirmative action or what, I think it should be you know, on the basis of true equality, right? And I feel uh, repeal of, you know, uh, an article like that in the Constitution is in keeping with the needs of a modern nation state, right? And we cannot continue uh, to go into the 21st century and on, okay, in this old anachronistic uh, conception of the nation, right? We are all equal. Finished. Let's go on. Right? So, in my opinion, okay, uh, 
I think it's important, but I leave it up to the to the assembly here to decide. You know how you will go about. My very quick take on Article 153 is that it impoverishes, it diminishes the nation. It had its time in uh, history. Uh, that time should have come and gone some time ago. It's not too late. I think that uh, a constitution without Article 153, but ensuring that the uh, needs of all in the country, not based on race or color or region, if, if that's respected, that's good enough. So, you know, I'm for the hard solution, which is to take out Article 153. I don't want to pass uh, the mic on to the other two families. Yeah, I, I, I have a two-pronged approach to this problem. I find that the first thing that needs to be got rid of is all the amendments after 1957 that have got no currency at all. Everything that was not agreed to in 1957 have all got to go, which means the new economic policy has got to go. And I think uh, people like Anwar Ibrahim and Khalil Ibrahim have gone on record to, so, to say that they are for the abolition of the new government policy. After that, after that, the Equality Act has to go hand in hand with the Human Rights Act. Uh, the reason why the Equality Act is now in the United Kingdom is because it has to be, it has to fall in line with the European High Human Rights Commission. And so the, the former regulations that is now given way to the Equality Act. So the Equality Act has to go hand in hand with the Human Rights uh, Commission. Okay. So uh, I would like a two-pronged two, two approach. If we can do all that and see that all the equality rules come into play, that we have achieved something. You know, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. 